Hi there, Will here, and today I'd like to talk to you about my camera collection. It's uh, not my primary idea for a video this week, but the weather is uh, not allowing my initial plans, so instead we'll have a look at these things. Here's an overview of the majority of them before we get going. Nikonos 2, two of them, Nikon F3, Olympus Mu Zoom, a red Zikonic light meter, Nikonos 5 in orange, Nikonos 5 in green, Olympus Trip 35, Olympus Mu 2, Contax G2, Mamiya 7 2, Yashica 635, RB67 Pro S, RB67 Pro SD, Nikon F90X, and uh, some other point and shoots that I'll show you. And I'm probably also going to talk about some lenses and uh, DVC cameras at some point. Also, I sold my DSLR, and I'm going to chat about that at some point in the video too. I suppose the best place to start with uh, things would be the beginning, and uh, pretty much the oldest camera I own at this point that I haven't sold is my Yashica 635, which was my first medium format camera. I got it off a guy that used to work at Kodak, I think, off eBay in like 2015. And it served me well. I made some photographs that I like with it. It's uh, quite a nice little camera. I mean, it's designed so that you can shoot 35 mil in it. That's what the, the name means. I never shot 35 mil in it, but quite quirky. Then the oldest 35 mil camera I own is this Nikon F90X, which is a really, really decent uh, 35 mil camera and uh, allows you to put a bunch of really good Nikon glass on it. They're not very hyped because they're quite uh, plasticky and uh, not exactly beautiful, but uh, they're really functional as cameras and I could probably make all of the 35mm work that uh, I do make just with this camera alone. A step back, but a step up from the F90X, I have the Nikon F3, which I've done a full review on, so if you're interested in hearing my full thoughts on it, you can check them out uh, there. But uh, it is a really, really wonderful camera and also a bunch of really great lens capabilities if you wanted to own more than one. I only have one because this isn't my main camera and I don't really buy many lenses for cameras that I don't use very frequently, but uh, it's great. A step beyond the F3 in terms of 35mm cameras is my Contax G2, which is my main 35mm camera. I also only own uh, one lens for it, which is the 45mm F2 Zeiss Panner, but uh, <laughs> I don't really need another lens for it, to be honest. If there was one lens I'd want to own, it's the 16mm that uh, I tried out in a different video, but the rendering that one gets off this camera and the user experience is uh, second to none in 35mm for me. But, to be honest, I am considering selling it after my Nikonos bricked, because uh, electronics are starting to scare me. <laughs> and speaking of scary electronics, this is my Mamiya 7 II, which is my second most used medium format camera. I mainly used it for like three years when my RB wasn't working, because when I bought my RB it was broken and I only actually managed to get someone to repair it properly four years into owning it. I did use it in uh, that time period, but uh, mainly borrowing other people's ones and uh, infrequently trying mine again to see if it had miraculously fixed itself, which it inevitably hadn't, but I eventually got it sorted out. Anyway, I've got a full review on this camera too. It's wonderful. It's worth too much now. I barely ever use it because I'm scared of breaking it. And it's electronic. Then, to talk about my most used film camera, which uh, you'd likely have gathered if you've hung around on the channel for a while, because most of my videos, the pictures in them are made on this thing. This is my Mamiya RB67 Pro SD, my one working RB. The Pro S has a 65mm lens jammed on it. For the second time, this lens has done this before. Don't buy the 65mm lens, they are full of issues. Constant issues. Anyway, this is uh, my favourite medium format camera, in spite of the uh, agony that it uh, brings in its use, which you can hear more about in its full review. It's also the camera that I have the most lenses for. I'll show you uh, a bunch of them. And I've got the 50mm, the 90mm, the 250mm and the 500mm. Also the uh, 65 but I don't use the 65 because it's attached to my ProRes and is a piece of junk. For examples from each of them, here's some from the 50, here's some from the 90, here's some from the 250 and here's some from the 500. All of them are usable. These three are usable uh, professionally in my eyes and the 500 is usable as a novelty. I've got a full review out on that as well. Then I've got this Olympus Mu 2, which my girlfriend's dad gave me. 
and uh, it's a wonderful little point and shoot and it would be uh, probably more frequently used if it weren't for the fact that this thing has a motor issue it's uh, got a problem with winding like it very frequently will not space properly or skip a frame and I've heard that apparently one can fix that by cleaning a sensor somewhere in it but uh, I haven't uh, given that a go yet or had someone give it a go. I've got this Olympus Trip 35 that I got given by a, a stranger on the internet when I asked if anyone had film cameras that they didn't need anymore. I haven't shot it yet but I'm very curious to because I've heard a bunch of good things about its glass and the uh, user experience. Then probably my second most used uh, 35mm camera would be the Nikonos 5. This one I shot a video on recently and uh, in the video I believe I said something about uh, the risk involved in taking it underwater and scuba diving and that uh, I'd read on the seals but there was potential for it to flood and I think it did flood. I mean initially I thought it was an electronic problem because it smelled like burnt electronics but then someone reached out to me and told me to look underneath the shutter button because uh, very frequently they leak there and it isn't apparent that they've leaked and uh, I looked in it and there was rust and uh, the shutter itself like the advance lever is jammed that's what's causing the issue I managed to like make the advance lever go forward and like prime the shutter and the shutter actually fired so I have hope that this thing is repairable I've reached out to Narcosis the guy who can still repair them waiting to hear back but uh, there's potential for it and in the meantime I've got a backup Nikonos 5 that I bought two weeks before that one died and it is the olive version which is why I bought it not really because I expected the other one to die. I'm very nervous about taking this into the water now though because <laughs> if it goes the route of the last one then I won't have any underwater access. I've got two Nikonos 2s as well. Neither of them really work but what I'm hoping is that uh, I can scarper parts from one and put in the other and make one functional one. Not functional in terms of taking underwater, because I'd never trust uh, either of these to go underwater again, but just functional to maybe walk around in the rain with. Could be cool. Another broken camera, my Olympus Mu Zoom, which works perfectly well. It just doesn't have the uh, oyster shell on off thing, so I need to jimmy this little switch over here to make it work, but uh, it works perfectly well. It's the only Mu I've ever owned that had absolutely no light leaks, ironically. And I suppose I can talk about some things that aren't camera related as well here, like uh, this Iconic L308S meter that I have, which I got when I bought some strobes for free. And uh, it's really cool. It's mainly pretty and I don't use it. It does have some functionality beyond my main light meter, which is the L308B. It remembers settings and uh, I think I think that you can make it do a shutter priority instead of aperture priority as well, but I haven't used it frequently enough to know that. And then in terms of cameras that uh, I have but have never used, I've got this Helena thing and this Konica C35. The Helena is just a, an absolute brick. Someone gave it to me uh, for the sake of curiosity. And the Konica works perfectly well. It just needs new light seals and I've never shot it. Maybe for a future video. And that's my film camera collection, pretty much. There's probably a couple I haven't mentioned, but uh, those are the main ones that I might use on occasion and do use frequently for some of them. And with regards to my digital camera, or lack thereof, I had a Nikon D610 for like six years that I only made 300 total pictures on, all of which were like pre-flash tests for other film pictures, so... I got rid of it and invested in a better video camera, which is uh, why I might look more HD now than I usually do. I got it from a dude on YouTube called uh, Ion Films. Very lovely guy. He sent it to me from uh, Amsterdam, so shout out to him. It's not really going to change the way I go about things, I feel. I mean, it's uh, going to change the fact that I have to download stuff off of iCloud, which is what I had to do for the last uh, few months while I was trying to get uh, a replacement for the D610 and uh, I'll have more HD uh, landscapes now than I used to, which is pretty much the uh, main goal I had because it's very hard to make a landscape come across as impressive as it actually is on video without a, a decent camera. And hopefully this one accomplishes that job. I don't actually have a proper lens for it yet. I made David lend me like a Tamron lens that uh, came from a Canon EF film camera, which uh, is definitely not the, the peak of optics, but things will improve. And if you wanted things to be sharper, now they will be. And if you didn't want them to be sharper, don't worry. There's still going to be plenty of DV footage. And speaking of DV footage, 
Here's a quick overview of my DV cameras. I have a Sony VX2100E, which is sort of uh, the nicest DVC camera I own and probably could get a hold of, except its tape head doesn't work anymore, so I can't record the tapes with it. So I record directly to my computer with a Firewire cable and only use it for like talking headshots these days, basically. Then I've got a Canon MV750i, which works perfectly with tapes, but uh, is terrible quality and uh, its battery is pretty terrible so it lasts like 40 minutes max <laughs> not ideal the one i use more frequently on like outside expeditions is this panasonic nv mx 500 which is great its battery lasts decently it's got a leica lens so <laughs> i don't know i guess if uh, optics matter in 720p then it's sorted and recently my gran dug up this uh, panasonic nv gs 15 i think it's called in uh, her cupboard and I'm going to give it a go. It has the potential to be the least optically uh, high quality camera now over the Canon NV750i which uh, is exciting because the grainier things can be for some situations the better. And that's about all I have to talk about on the camera front. I hope uh, that gave you some insights into the tools I use to make photographs which is all they really are and uh, I could probably do away with the majority of them. I might at some point but uh, I'm somewhat of a camera hoarder so <laughs> You're a hoarder in general! Somewhat of a general hoarder, so the odds are slim. But uh, besides that, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.